And our winners for week four, we'll call them up and have them receive their award and then say a word or two briefly. First of all, from Archbishop Hannon High School, Caroline Stanley. Caroline has accumulated a GPA of 3.78. A member of the National Honor Society, campus ministry, historian, student ambassador, member of the volleyball, track, and soccer teams, 2A state champion and record holder in the Javelin, volunteers for the Humane Society and Flood Victims Organization, Principal's Honor Roll and Crimson Honor Roll, wants to attend Millsaps or Mississippi State and study business. From Archbishop Hannon High School, a round of applause for Caroline Stanley. I'm going to take this. Caroline. That's a box for you. Congratulations to Caroline for her award and the good work that she's doing in the classroom. Our second recipient from Jesuit High School is Patrick Murray. A cumulative GPA of 4.52, 1580 on the SAT. Member of the swim team, Biotech Club and Student Council, National Honor Society member, volunteers for Habitat for Humanity. High honors on the National Greek exam and gold medal in the National Latin exam. Wants to study classics and biology. From Jesuit High School, Patrick Murray. Patrick? Congratulations to both Carolina and Patrick for their outstanding work in the classroom. Our first speaker today is in his first season at Riverdale High School after spending 12 years as the first ever head football coach at Helen Cox. He spent one year as an assistant at his alma mater, De La Salle. He previously served as defensive coordinator at Carr and at St. Augustine. At 2 and 1 on the season, the Rebels will host Pearl River a Friday night at Joe Yenny Stadium. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Willie Brooks of Riverdale High School. Yeah. First and foremost, I'd like to, uh, you know, thank my principal, Mr. Danielle Yanusa. Uh, I have so much support over at Riverdale High School. I can't say this is my first year. Last year, I coached at my alma mater, De La Salle, and had a pleasure uh, to go back home and, uh, you know, just get an opportunity to be assistant coach and coach again. Um, I'll see one of my uh, good friends right here, Mike. He worked with me at Dela Salle right now. He's doing a great job over at Hannon. Um, Bryce Brown, back in the day, I coached me that in the car. And uh, just letting y'all know how old I'm getting, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, but I, 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 I welcome the challenge of going to uh, Riverdale. It's uh, uh, Jefferson Parish Public School. Um, you know, prior to that, I was the head coach of Helen Cox for 12 years and, uh, you know, started that program from a junior high into a high school and uh, you know this is another opportunity to go in place that uh, historically hasn't been a football powerhouse and uh, being able to uh, you know work with some good young children good young men that come to practice every day they work hard and they want to be successful in life and when you do those things good things usually happen behind it like Ken said earlier we're two and one right now um, we have a a pre-district game against uh, Pearl River this Friday, which I know uh, is going to be real tough for our guys. But we're going to come in, we're working hard, and hopefully we can continue winning. It would should, you know, be something kind of new over at Riverdale. Everyone is ex kind of excited. I have an excellent coaching staff. A couple of guys are ball with me from, uh, you know, previous stops that I've been at Ellen Cox and then at Carr and at De La Salle and all those things, and um, I mean, I think my coaching staff the greatest. I always uh, give a uh, testament to those guys for the hard work and the commitment they have with the children. Um, moving forward, uh, 
You know, it's just an honor. I, I take my coaching and profession very seriously. I think coaching is teaching and teaching is coaching. Uh, this is my 25th year uh, coaching high school football. I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of good coaches uh, in this profession and also coach a lot of good athletes that became successful young men and adults. Those are the things that I, I remember most. I don't remember the scores of games two, three, four, five years ago, and sometimes that's not even important anymore. It's just about the lives that you affect. When you get a phone call or a text message from a guy that's coaching in the NFL, Eric Henderson, he's he coaching right now for the Los Angeles uh, Chargers, I'm about to say San Diego. But, uh, you know, when he calls and check on me and stuff like that, and guys that you coached in you know, previous and uh, the biggest thing is when they reach out to me and say, thank you, coach, for some of the lessons that you taught me in life. And those are the things, you know, we don't make a million dollars coaching high school football, maybe in college, but not in high school, you know, but those are our million dollar paychecks when we get those kind of calls, and those kind of text messages, letting people know that, you know, you affected their lives and it means so much to them. So it means extra much to the coaches on, in our profession. Um, I just like to always thank you guys for all the support that you do for high school football. I talk to Ed Daniels weekly basis. Talk to Ken. Uh, my football mentor is Don Whitney. Uh, Don Whitney uh, coached me in high school at Dallas South. He also gave me my first job at Edna Car, and uh, well, I was a defensive coordinator for nine years, and we had a lot of success. But the most important thing Don Whitney always taught me is how to win with class. In the losing class. We lost two state championship games in 95 and 99, and those were the toughest things, going on the carpet floor and getting a second place trophy. But those are things in life sometimes you have to learn how to do. And so when you're teaching coaching, is X's and O's is only a small part of it. It's 10% of our jobs. The rest of it is mentoring young men on how life is going to give you roses and sometimes it's going to give you lemons. You know, you have to be able to respond in both situations. The most important thing, hopefully, in my journey now at Riverdale is you guys are going to see my players, see players that come out of our program going to be success, going to be successful in any endeavor that they do in life. And the last thing i like to say to you guys, I mean, my wife and I, and she's, she's very supportive. It's Robin, Dr. Dr. Brooks, she always reminds me. She's the brains of the family. Um, we were invited to eight of our eight of our former players at Helicopter in a year and a half span, college graduates. That's the most important thing. I just came from Tulane uh, uh, ceremony. Elders Washington played for me at Helicopter graduate. You know, Javon Lawson played at UL graduate. Deron Singleton played at Missouri graduate. Those are the most important things. Elders, excuse me, uh, Jared Miles, Louisiana Tech graduate. Also had a Millsap graduate, Adam Williams graduated. All those guys within a two year span graduated, you know, from our program and went on to do great things in life. So right now, I might not have all the state championships that I want, but I'm a very, very blessed man to be able to coach those guys. I want to thank you guys for listening to my testimony. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the next guy who come up, Bryce Brown. He's another guy, you know, hopefully I had an impact on his life and he's doing some great things over at Edna Carr. So, uh, once again, I want to thank the New Orleans Quarterback Club. Thank you. Uh, yes, Kim was uh, just mentioned that we have a, a guy right now, he's a junior. So I got another year and a half with him. His, his name is Antonio Joseph over at Riverdale. Uh, he's a running back. He's about 5'10", five, five, about 225. He's a load. So, I mean, he's going he's gonna to be our bell cow for the next couple of years. Um, Riverdale is also have, have a guy right now, the fastest guy in uh, college football, Dante Jackson. And we make sure we uh, have him around our program to let the kids know that, you know, you can uh, achieve some success and touch the success what Dante and these guys bring to you. So, I mean, I don't want it to be a pipe dream. I want it to be a community-based thing over at Riverdale. But, yeah, once again, uh, his name is Antonio Joseph. He's going to be a 2019 guy. 
and uh, he's a load. Any other questions? All right, thank you guys very, very much. Thank you, Willie. Again, Riverdale and Pearl River Friday night. Our next speaker is in his third year coaching at his alma mater. He led Carr to the unbeaten season in the Class 4A state championship in 2016. And he's earned Coach of the Year honors in the Metro New Orleans area from this organization for the last two seasons. There's only two years at Carr, quite a streak. He was an assistant at Carr from 2007 to 2014 and played for the Cougars as well as playing at Grambling State as an offensive lineman. At two and one, Carr will face unbeaten Carver Friday night at Joe Brown Stadium. Please give a warm, ready to go Sports Foundation quarterback club welcome to Coach Bryce Brown of Abbott Carr. Thank you, Mr. Trahan. Thank you to the uh, Green New Orleans uh, quarterback club. Always a pleasure to have you. It seems like everywhere I go the last three days, I hear two words, Carr and Dale, I said, and, you know, and after we, they beat us on Friday, you know, they say, Coach, what are we going to do? Uh, it's our first time losing in the last two years. But, you know, what we're stressing to our kids now is it isn't any success without struggle. And I think uh, any successful person that's sitting before me today understands that wholeheartedly that you have to struggle in order to have success. A lot of people look at car program as, you know, a powerhouse like Coach Brooks talks about. But what people rarely talk about is, in the past 12 years I've been at Carr, we've been in the state championship six times. The first two times we lost. My first year as the head coach, we lost. So again, that struggle, that struggle creates success, that struggle creates drive. And um, you know, my mom was asking me on Saturday, what you gonna do with your boys? You they couldn't finish in the fourth quarter. And I said, you know what? On Monday, they'll go to study hall, and uh, we'll go to practice right after. In order, to, in order to keep a sense of accountability, we have to go by priority. And I think uh, being a student athlete comes first. Uh, if you play a car, and uh, I know you've heard a lot from the numerous guys who receive awards, is, is that they have a rigorous schedule with study hall and tutoring every day before practice. And that, that keeps things in perspective because sometimes your perception is far away from reality. I think um, when you talk about winning on the field, you have to win in the classroom. And, you know, we didn't win in the first quarter of our school building. You know, we had a lot of guys with ease. And that goes in a part of how we carry ourselves on the field. Because if we're a lazy student, we're going to be a lazy athlete. It's, it's, it's a different approach, but it works for car. And you know, we, we, we come from an A school academically, but we, we also have an A in athletics also. But if we keep that in order, academics, athletics, if we keep those priorities in line, we'll have more success in the end. Um, you know, Coach, Mr. Trahan always talks about the numerous athletes that we signed. Since I've been at Carr, this has gone in my 12th year. We signed over 140 student athletes to a full athletic scholarship. But how did we get there? We got there by qualifying academically. And if we keep that, that same sense of purpose, that same sense of, of, of structure and priority, we're going to be able to still have success. And it's not just about winning the state championship year in and year out. If everybody thought that we were going to win every game that we played, you'd be crazy. I mean, that's, that's just not how football is played. Just like life is, it's going to have ups and downs. It's going to have struggles. But only the strong is going to survive. And I think that's what we teach at Carr is knowing in our hearts that, you know, we have to have struggle in order to have success. Because if we keep that in our mind, then it creates a successful mindset. So um, I want to give a shout out to my coaching staff. They've done a phenomenal job. We've been together now for about eight or nine years. Uh, and that's the key to this thing is coaching different kids the same way and keeping that staff intact. And our staff is, uh, has 16 guys on it, 11 of which graduated from Carr. So that's what we want to have. We want to have our guys come back. We want to have our guys get back to the community. And uh, Mr. Daniels, he did a piece on Friday Night Football about uh, to let George, who was, who was killed right after graduating from Alcorn State University. 
And you know, that's the kind of struggle we're talking about. Those kind of things happen on a daily basis in our community, and that's the kind of things that we're trying to avoid when we coach, when me, myself, uh, Coach Brooks, that's the kind of things that we're trying to stop. And if we keep, keep creating a sense of accountability and a sense of purpose, we can stop those things from happening. So again, thank you, Mr. Trahan, for having me. I know I was scheduled to speak uh, earlier this month, but I had to reschedule. Sorry, Coach Brooks, for, for coming on your day. But, you know, Coach Brooks, he coached me. Uh, that's my guy. You know, as soon as I went to I sell beat us on Friday, I thought I was going to get a text message from him. But uh, I've received hundreds of texts that say, go Cavs. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to them again. Uh, but we'll bounce back. So thank you all again for having me. Any questions for Bryce? Questions for Bryce, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Right here. Uh, there are 140 athletes that have a chemical that graduated from college. Uh, numerous, numerous. Uh, we just graduated Standard Snowboard and, and from the University of Miami. Just graduated uh, two years ago, Munchilego, from the University of Cincinnati. Uh, we have three or four graduates from the uh, Tulane University. Um, so I, I wish I could name all those guys off the top of my head, but you know, I'm pretty sure it's close to the 90 percentile because one thing we're teaching that car is finish. Not just on the field, but off it. Yeah, Speed and Low left a and uh, he's, he's here in New Orleans. He, he comes to visit Carr uh, every now and then, and he, he's in good spirits, and he's still, you know, striving to become where all of us, all of us coaches know our student athletes want to be as an NFL player. So, you know, he's keep, he, he keeps working and hopefully continues success to him. What do you think are your toughest, toughest opponents coming up? Uh, well, it doesn't get any easier. We have, uh, we have undefeated call this Friday night. Um, we still have Lake Area. We still have McDonald 35. Uh, we always going to play the top opponents, uh, as you know. But I think uh, in playing those tough opponents, uh, you only can get better. You can't get worse. I think if you, if you continue to play the top teams like the De La Salle's, the Landry Walkers, the St. Paul's, Warren East since 35, you'll continue to get better. I think everybody's anticipating our game against uh, McDonald 35 in a couple of weeks and closing out the season against uh, a uh, very talented Warren Easton team. Thank you. All. All right, thank you, brother.